Yo, people, what's going on? T. Haynes, the Dome uh, Podcast. Look, man, this is not an episode. More like a little shorts real quick just to recognize and show love to the Low End Theory sophomore album by a tribe called Quest, my favorite rap group. It dropped in 1999, September the 24th, man. What can I say? You know, coming off that People Instinctive Travels, man, I love Tribe. Um, when I heard Left My Wild and El Segundo, Can I Kick It? You know what I'm saying? Bonita. But but let me just go back real quick. Run DMC was my favorite rap group first. That's the uh, group that my big brother kind of introduced me to. That's when I first learned how to scratch on the turntable. You know what I'm saying? And then EPMD became my next favorite uh, rap group. And once I heard Bonita, I was like, it's something about this dude Q-Tip, you know, whatever. And, and, and Tribe debut album was still kind of like a, a Q-Tip solo album. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was kind of gave you this Q-Tip solo album vibe. And, you know, Fife was really on like two or three songs, kind of like, you know, and Jerobi was did some talking during the album, but he wasn't really rhyming like that. Uh, and, of course, uh, Ali Shea Muhammad was DJing. But when Chick the Rhyme came out around, I want to say September, maybe the ninth or something like that, of 1991, I'm in high school kicking it, you know what I'm saying? That's when you heard, uh, you know, Fife and Q-Tip kind of going back and forth and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? So I think it was Chick the Rhyme. You know, let me let me fact check that. Yeah, Chick the Rhyme, September 9th, then Jazz, you know what I'm saying? Um, was November 27th in scenario, of course. It came out in March of 92, you know what I'm saying? But uh, so the low end theory, man, like when you look at that album, the, the, the jazz uh, influence on it, I think that they might have had the most jazz influence on the album after Step the Sonic, you know what I'm saying? So uh, what Q Tim did, Ron caught on the bass, you know what I'm saying? And of course, just when you put that album on, man, you know, so of course. You know, you heard Check the Rhyme first, you saw the video for Check the Rhyme, and it was dope. And it was like, okay, Tribe is back. They seem more polished. The production was probably more polished. You get Fife and Tip, you know what I'm saying? No Jerobi, and that's another whole, whole thing. You know, Jerobi ended up leaving the group, and he's always had, like, Tribe, uh, he always had the spirit of the Tribe, like Q-Tip said in a documentary, Beach Rhymes of Life, but he was gone. You know what I'm saying? But I think he came out later when Fife got uh, sick and, tour with them of course he rhymed and stuff on that uh the last tribe album you know what I'm saying so job was never gone all the way because the relationship i think mostly he had with fife but he was still down with the fellas like that you know what i'm saying but nevertheless man fife becomes a, you know a star man on, on the low end theory you know q-tip had bonita already you know what i'm saying it's like you know let my wife else gun though that's all q-tip but you know when check the rhyme comes, now you got fight for that. It's the yin and the yang and all that stuff. And but of course, man, let me just go back to like when you first put that album on, and that back in the days when I was a teenager before I had status and before I had a pager. You know what I'm saying? Like excursions is the perfect way to start an album. You know what I'm saying? Like I've done posts on the importance of starting the album and ending the album, and the low end theory is one of those albums that made me think about that. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's the perfect way to start out, and it ended the album powerful. You know what I'm saying? You can ask for, and you know, back then, you know, in the 80s and 90s, a lot of uh, final tracks on albums was pos posse cuts. You know what I'm saying? If you go back right now to some of them joints, you'll, you'll, you'll notice that there, there are some posse cuts that end up being um, outros, you know what I'm saying, or well, last final songs. But say we got excursions, man. We got bugging out. Microphone checks one, two, what is this? The five footer coming with the roughneck business. And that's the bust through the door of uh, Fife. Fife is here to stay type thing, man. So you, you go from excursions to bugging out, you know what I'm saying, to a uh, rap promoter, you know what I'm saying? Real important nowadays, strictly butter, you know what I'm saying? You got butter, you know what I mean? You got verses from the abstract, man. And you got Ron Carter on the bass, he said, but that verse from the abstract is dope. Um, you know what I'm saying? They got show business, man, with uh, Diamond D, uh, uh, Lord Jamal, and us, uh, Dot X. You know what I'm saying? I think Poop might have already been gone by now because I think Poop only did the first album with Brand New Mans, and then he ended up coming back on the uh, 1998 album, uh, Foundation. But after, after one for all, Poop was gone. So, but this is Brand New Mans on here. You know what I'm saying? No Grand Poop, though. You know what I'm saying? Number seven, Vibes and Stuff. Number eight, the infamous Date Rape. 
Number nine, check the rhyme. Number 10, everything is fair when you're living in the city, you know. Number 11 is uh, jazz, of course. 12, sky pager. 13, what? What's a fat man without food in his gut? You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, then 14, the scenario, man, featuring uh, Leaders of New School. And that's when the bust of rhymes become like something big right here. You know what I'm saying? On scenario, man, like his verse set him apart from Leaders of New School. His verse made people look at him like, man, you need to go solo. You know, we, I, I, you see the Jackson 5 for a while, like the little, the little, the, the young bro, yeah, Michael, yeah, him. He, 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 he out of here. You know what I'm saying? You, go do Ben and all that stuff, and you you solo, bro. You don't stop till you get enough. You're not doing Jackson 5 no more. I, that's not this reunion tour. But it was kind of like that with uh, Boston. Boston always said he never wanted to go uh, solo. He, was, he said he was scared to go solo at one point. He said, you know, doing one verse on a song, he was comfortable with that. Solo career, you got to do three three verses on every song, and people understand how hard it is to be a solo artist, singer, rapper, whatever you are. It's, it's on you, man. For at the end of the day, you got producers, you got people assisting, but you got you to pay them verses, man. You know what I'm saying? So uh, especially hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, looking at Tribe, man, like Five Mics in the Source, it's on every kind of list of greatest albums of all time in hip hop culture. It's on a lot of lists of greatest albums and just music in general. You know what I'm saying? Q Tip to me on this. This is the album I think that um, that Dre said he heard uh, this album while you know while he was recording the Chronic and gave him a lot of inspiration and and stuff like that. And there's a picture of Q Tip and and, and uh, Dr. Dre holding each other's album. Um, Q Tip heard the Chronic. He, Q Tip said he heard the chronic before low in theory. No, no, no. Q Tip heard, I want to say either straight out of Compton Nicks for Life or somebody that was influ influenced on by Dre. And then Dre heard uh, the low in theory. Y'all can fact check me on that. But nevertheless, they were fans of each other's talent and things. Like that. And, they, and they both are a lot the same in terms of I bet you they both have so much music they will never hear. You know what I'm saying? In the vaults, man, they recorded with other people. So it was good to see. Uh, Q-Tip recently doing the album with, uh, with L. Cool J. You know what I'm saying? But um, nevertheless, um, the Low End Theory was a pinnacle album in, in hip-hop, a pinnacle album in East Coast hip-hop. Um, it influenced a lot of people after after them. Of course, you know, in terms of production, you know, during that time, Q-Tip was, was running around. Of course, you know, Eric Sermon, Pete Rock, The Lost Professor, and all of these guys. But, you know, people after them, you think about the you know, some influence here. You know, you think about the Kanye West and the Jay Dillers, and I know Ninth Wonder was influenced probably most by Pete Rock, but you still he Tribe's one of his favorite groups, you know what I'm saying? So you still got a lot of people after them, probably even some mad lib and uh maybe some of the guys from Soul, Souls of Mischief and, and Far Side and all these guys had dope uh producers, some of the names escaping right now, so don't 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 kill me for that. We know the outcast was influenced by um by by trial call quest and maybe organized noise but have got some influence from 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 q-tip maybe a little bit q-tip has influenced a lot of people we know what he did for mob deep infamous album as far as like being somewhat the executive producer uh assisting havoc and havoc has talked about this so q-tip was um uh, on a roll uh and we still debate well what would you rank the low end theory what would you rank you know men and riders and when you compare those two you know, I, I've, I've had lists before. I've had Low End Theory, one of the top 10 albums of all time. I've had Men and Marauders, one of the top five before. Because Men and Marauders is my favorite rap album. But if you uh, want to say the Low End Theory is better, you know, you, you will not get an argument from me, man. So 33 years later, wow, I was in high school, man, show you my age. But just 33 years later, man, the, the potency of, of Low End Theory is still there. I listened to it this morning. Because I'm working remote today, and I listened to the whole thing while I was doing some typing. I was like, "Man, it still sounds good, and it sounds good in the car too." Because the bass, the bass line, and just the production of the lower in theory, man. But yeah, man, shout out to my favorite group, Tribe, man. Peace.